see somebody there. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm hopeless. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Hi everyone, Shirley Peters here. Uh, today we're doing this pretty picture in watercolour. Just fast forwarding the sketch part of this uh, painting. The, uh, it's 500% so don't go thinking I whip it out really quickly. <laughs> I don't, I'm very slow. But I, think I just didn't want you to put, put you through it. Uh, if you want to download the photograph from uh, the link below and uh, maybe even trace these figures uh, onto your watercolour page. It wouldn't matter if they're a bit smaller than uh, what I'm doing them. But uh, that's one way of uh, otherwise just draw them. I hope you forgive me for doing this because uh, I think it'll just make the uh, video go a bit, a bit faster. I'm going to start with, oh I'll just clean up my palette here a little bit, it's a bit dirty then. See I sanded it off, I don't know that I did a favour there because all the paint's getting caught in, my, in the ridges. I use my husband's electric sander. Some very nice person made, left a comment and told me that I had to use um, toothpaste. It probably would have worked better. Okay. Okay, I'm going to add water to start with because this is a fairly subtle blend down to red and then back from a tiny bit of pale over the, in the horizon there. Very light. And then it's red in the middle there, going down to yellow here. So I'm going to start at my top edge with the yellow right at the very top and very thin. Then I'll go to the next one on my palette, which is more of a chrome yellow. And I'm, over, I'm doing it darker than the photograph because I'm hoping that it will um, lighten to the right shade. Now to the red. I'll put my brush upside down and paint down into that horizon. And then bring the, hopefully, the red will seep back up. I'm just going to quickly turn that upside down just to get a lovely, oops, Hold it so you can see it, it might help. It's moving around a fair bit, it's rolling around. I'll turn it back the other way in a sec. And while I'm doing it, I just can see there's a bit of business happening at the side here, but not much I can do about that. Got to let the sides do their own thing. Okay, so it went back up, now I've turned it back around, it's coming down again. I'll let that do its own thing. I won't, I won't um, play with that. But what I will do is bring, it, bring water there and do the reverse. So I'm going to start with the red. And I think it's a little bit paler than the top. I'll leave that tiny little bit of white there. Oh, honey. Honey's barking at something. I think they're just leaves falling outside. I'm going to intensify that to try and match the, the sky. And then I'll just run the, my brush down. I'll add a little bit of the yellow to it here in the middle. Push that in, spread it round. I'll take it back up a little bit, bring it down. 
I'll go to the lemony colour. That is too strong, but if I add water to my brush, I'll just bleed that out. In fact, I'll probably have a go at... Hmm, where's my... Just looking for the kitchen paper. Just peel that up a bit. See, if it's too strong, you just take it up with... Wet your brush, push it through. I'm having a bit of fun up the top here. So while that's happening, which shouldn't be happening, I'll just fix that up. And most things are fixable in a watercolour painting. I'll blend that in. Beauty of water is you can do horizontal lines like that and uh, they, they're forgiven because the, uh, um, the, the water can have slight waves and ripples. Now I've got a lot of purple in there, I'll take that out. I don't want the purple at this stage, I just want ultramarine blue. So the way I do that is just wet the, wet the tissue, oh, soak it up. Trying to get away with just using this one palette. So ultramarine oh, blue. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make it very, very, very weak. And when it goes into this yellow, it's going to look a bit green. But because it's a, a pinkish blue, it won't, it won't, it'll look a bit grey as well. It's hard to explain, but it's got, it's, it doesn't match, like it's an opposite to yellow, so it's not going to gel with the yellow and be happy sitting there looking very greeny. Hopefully it's, that's the plan anyway. As I come down the front, I'm making it darker. And we have got see this lovely diagonal pattern to put in. I'm going to go to an interesting colour right down here. I'll do the cerulean, I think. And I'll do it in horizontal bands, I mean diagonal strokes. Mm. Yeah, really dark now. I want the, the blue to get very, very dark in the foreground. Purple. More of the cerulean. Okay, so. Using the tip of the brush. This will probably all disappear because I'm going to be it's a bit too wet to, to be playing like this, but... A hint, a hint of it's good to start with. And then there's the horizontal lines going all the way across. I'm going to put very dark over that, so that's... If you look at the photograph, you'll see that, um, that blue is going to be very forgiving there. I'll just put some more of that blue in while I've got it on my brush, while I've got it handy. Uh, once again, the background there is misbehaving. Oh my gosh, I just can't control that, can I? So I'm gonna have to clean brush. No, no blue on that, please. Have another go at taking out that white. I mean, taking it out too white. Yep, it's coming. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I almost need you guys to keep an eye on that. While I'm concentrating down the bottom here, you just give me a little yell every time that starts to bleed. <laughs> ah, dear. I'll just go and get a dryer. A little bit of blue on my brush. Just going to draw in the distant horizons and the buildings that are on the other side of this lake. It's a certain amount of industry and small towns. The odd chimney. I think there's some water based energy um, projects over there. 
I'm just putting that in very light blue at this stage. Much lighter than that photograph is showing. In fact, just for the fun of it, what I might do is just put brown, a little bit of the brown, the blue, which is a kind of a black colour. I might just touch it across at the horizon edge and let it just bleed up into the grey I just put on. That'll make it just look a little bit interesting. Right, now I'm going to do the figures. Hold one's breath, head, shoulders, torso, one leg, and the other leg. Arms coming out. Not necessarily the right brush for it, but it's just a matter of whatever ma makes, makes a mark. I might just change to a smaller mop. Because of the thin, the thin lines that I want to put in here, bike. And some sort of indication of feet. On this side, similar. Smaller head. I can hear someone talking. There shouldn't be anyone around, so I don't know what's. We might have visitors. Anyway, it's, she's wearing red pants, but I won't necessarily put them on her at this stage. Just leave them white like that. One arm down. One arm sort of a bit more, doing a bit more work. And if I just... I've had a lot of practice doing bikes because every year I do the Tour de France and this year it's just about starting so means I might not be doing as many of these watercolour tutorial type paintings that I'd like to do. So here's the reflections, oh, there's that other pylon, that's what they're called. So I've got a combination of blue and brown on my brush which is nice. Now I'll make it darker on this side. Darker still. Columns. And I'll just put that in there. Crisscross these lines so that they they match the patterns. Now, quite dark here. There's a couple of different bits of white underneath the pontoon, but on the whole, it's black. So that's a combination of brown and blue. Up there I'll do it a bit bluer. And the reflection in the water, almost monotone blue. I could come back later and just put a splash of colour. If they've got, if I decide to put colour on their clothing, I can put colour on the figures. They've gone very dark, they've, they've paled up, so I want them darker. So I just don't always do necks. I often have a floating head. It's just a personal choice. A couple of lines more. Same here. She's got the helmet floating down there. Her 
spike needs to be a bit more defined. Okay, I'm going to dry that again, just to lock it in. Going to put a very dark red pants on. Just a hint of colour in that into the you don't need to do this, you can just leave it black. Sometimes I just love to put a bit of interest. And these reflections in the water are so much duller and darker than the real than up the top. And under here it needs to go blacker, so I'll just get the brown and the blue going. And run it across like that. I'm just going to start pulling it out with a dry brush. So I might end up coming down, yeah, giving her a bit more reflection. Mm, and the blue top. Doot, 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 doot. And that one there. All right. Of course, this side of the pontoon is in the shadow from the setting sun. I'm going to put a very dark edge across there, across up there. And just for the fun of it, I'll just put some detail in the dark. Dark in dark detail is good. Now this pontoon can come nice and heavy on that side. Same with these ones. I use my little pinky to hold, hold everything up in the sky. And sometimes I've got mess on it. I've got paint on it. Right. I'm, I'm going to leave that very simple. I'm going to come down to the front now and go blue and brown and a bit of green. And I'm going to do the foliage at the front. So I'll start with it very dark across the base. Go right to the bottom. Really going to dramatise this. So blue, brown, green. It varies every time I do it, like it's going to be a little bit different to the one I did before. It's just a... It's going to... Foreground grass it is. Fill that right across the base so it's nice and solid. And now, with just a thin line going up, Going to start tracing up. I'm hoping you can see that and clear, and it's nice and clear because it's the funnest part. Keep your keep it your paints dark on the brush, and this is where the the thin edges of the mop really make a difference. That one's got seeds on it, so I'll do that on a couple of them just to make it interesting. Then over this side. Okay. I'll thicken up here just to give a variety of, I don't want to have it all even, even dot, dot, dot all the way across. You must vary. You have some spaces, have some where it's too much and other places where it's not, not nothing there. Okay, I'm thinking there's a bit of white there, I'll get rid of that. I'm happy to leave it like that. I could go to town on that water and go make that more um, cross-hatched, but I kind of like the, the smoothness of the watercolour when it's just um, underdone, I guess you could say. So thank you very much. I'll sign that because I like it very much. And I'll probably just give a little bit of a signature of, oh, I'll wait till it dry, oh, I'll dry it off. <laughs> so leave it with me and I'll come back with some photographs of it. 
Okay, here's a little bit of detail. Oh dear, focus, come on, where are you? Focus for me, thank you. The girls, messy old pontoon. Bit hard to see the colour here, I think. Distant detail, very casual. Well, thanks very much for watching, sticking with me in this video. It's been, a, it's, a, it's a nice little scene and it creates a pretty little painting, a silhouette of the figures looking out at a lovely lake. So uh, I like these sort of peaceful images. <laughs> It was fun to do. I hope you enjoy doing it too. And uh, I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.